so welcome to Live at Five, um, that was Live at Four, but given that the sound didn't work, I'm doing it again. So um, we're here back in the very cramped um, and messy studio. So this is um, my studio art sale, and I'm having a big clear out of um, a lot of the paintings and, and sculptures that I've got, because I need to make space. Because next year I've got um, a couple of exhibitions, um, I've got um, a couple of trading fairs and hopefully lots more is going to start to go into the calendar as I'm really starting to get out there and show people my work. Um, and I've got lots of ideas for new artwork that I want to, I want to grow to sort of go in the direction that I want to go in. So um, I need to make some space to, so I've got somewhere where I can store all of my work um, until I'm ready to take it for an exhibition. So this is um, my studio sale. I've put a link um, to this live. So if you click on the link, it will take you straight to the studio sale and you can buy directly from there. Everything's already discounted, reduced. It includes free UK postage. Um, so if you see anything that you like, um, you can go there now or you can watch the whole uh, whole live through and then and pop back and see at the end. Um, it has been already offered out to my um, Magic Circle subscribers, so they, um, they've already had first dibs, so, but there are some pieces left and uh, that's what I'm going to show you uh, now. So, first of all, um, hopefully you've got yourself um, a copper. wet the whistle before we begin. So first, um, given that everybody's talking about the Aurora Borealis at the minute in the UK, we don't, we don't often get to see it here. Um, so it's quite a buzz when, when we do get to see it. So I'm going to introduce you to some of my pieces. So the first one, this is the largest um, piece that I've done. It's called Metamorphosis. And it's an oil on um, a thick, chunky canvas, so it can hang straight on the wall um, without, uh, without a frame. And it's got that beautiful wave at the front, and then the aurora in the night sky just gently touching across. The, uh, the wave itself, this wave here, um, is a bioluminescent wave that you do see sometimes, and particularly in Wales is a very good place to see. Um, a bioluminescent wave. It's where the algae um, produce, I think it's a luciferase, and they produce this light like fireflies. And when they're disturbed, they, it lights up and it makes the wave look like it's alive. And I've actually used um, a special pigment to paint this wave. So when the light's turned off, it glows. It's too light to show you at the minute, but um, I'll show you some more pieces a bit like later on. So the next in the Aurora uh, collection is um, this one. This is called Enchanted, and it features my beautiful favourite thing to paint, which is reflections of sky in water. Just something about it. So that's that's um, Enchanted. This one um, is called Compel. It's on a slightly thinner canvas, so it would need to be framed to look its best. And it's an oil on canvas. And it really, really glows. You take a step back, the darks really become dark, and those lights just power up across the sky, like the canvas is actually a light itself. So that's Compel. This one is called Quest for the Lovers of Purple. And again, beautiful reflections in the lake. So Quest um, is one that some of you may already have a print of because um, you, may, you may be here because you bought one of my prints in my uh, mix and match for £5 print offer or on the, uh, the free print offer that I was advertising a little while ago. This oil painting, um, I made prints of it and those prints are in that, um, are in that sale. So this is Quest. This one is called Flight, and it's called Flight because when I painted it, the aurora appeared to make um, a pair of wings, especially 
in the reflection at the bottom, like an angel. All those lovely blues and greens. See this one's flight. This one is called Burst. I think I've captured pretty much every Aurora colour you could get in there. Again, the reflections on the lake below. The colours really, really pop. Then this one is called Invigorate. And Invigorate is again, it's another one that um, is in, uh, hi Lee, nice to see you. Another one that's in the uh, special collection where you can get a free print, mix and match. If you'd like the link for that, um, drop me a note below and I'll tell you. You can also message me directly. I've added a message me button to this so you can get hold of me. So this is Invigorate. Then, going a little bit more, um, oh, a bit more fantasy, I would say. This one is called Stonehenge because you've got the henge there and it's an oil on canvas and it's a bit more of a, a bit more of a fantasy piece with this beautiful um, galaxy in the sky in the background. So that's Stonehenge. And then the last one, I've just called this one um, Relaxing Aurora. It's a 10 by 10 inch, so it's a nice little tiny piece, perfect for a small space. And that wonderful, absolutely gorgeous light reflecting on the lake. Relaxing Aurora, so that's that one. Right, so, um, Ch changing, uh, changing atmosphere now. So we're going to go right, right back to um, a long time ago when I first started really painting and really trying to become a professional artist. Um, and I created a very small collection just called James Bond. And uh, I'm very proud of these paintings. There's only three left. The rest of the collection is now sold. Uh, this is the first piece. So this is... Hi Sue, nice to see you. This is um, the car that was in the James Bond film. So if you know if you're into Bond and cars and things, then you probably probably will like this one. And I've never painted a car before. I'll probably never paint a car again. But I quite enjoyed doing this one because the reflections. It's a reflection thing that I have. I really enjoy that painting the the, the way the light hits the metal and makes it change colour. The wheel trims were a bit of a challenge, but got there in the end. So that's um, that's the Aston Martin. Then this uh, classic, absolute classic James Bond, twelve by sixteen inch oil on canvas. It goes back to his Quantum of Solace era of films, and with his signature gun. I'm very proud of this portrait. I don't do portraits, really. I do pet portraits. I love painting animals. I rarely, rarely paint um, people. But this was, um, this was one that I'm really, really proud of how it came out. Then, this one, the ultimate for Bond lovers. So classic po pose with the gun. And again, I love painting that. With the reflections to make it look like it's so 3D. There. Put all the detail on his face and his eyes. Obviously, he was a lot younger um, then. So that's Bond. Okay, so um, change tack again. Now, this next um, collection of artworks is from. Um, my, my very first collection, you see, I didn't go to art college. Um, I've never been taught art. I've taught everything myself. I'm entirely self-taught. The whole process of making it, selling it, marketing it, making prints, I've taught myself all of it. Um, and this collection was the very first one that I probably put together, and it's called Evangelina. Now, this is, this is Evangelina. So she's a, a very glamorous lady. 
um, and this is called um, The Castle Terrace. I love the Gothic window. I think that's my favourite bit in the painting. Although I do like the glass, of course, and, um, and, and her jewel as well that she's wearing. But I loved painting the fabrics in this one. So this one, there's a story behind it, and I really should write it as a book because it's quite, it's quite long. But in essence, Evangelina um, goes to a library in Oxford, sort of set in the 1930s, and she finds a mysterious old green velvet backed book um, and inside there is there's the secret to manifestation the book tells you how to do true magic and it sets her off on a quest and each painting in the series um, was about a different part of that quest of her getting closer and closer to learning how to use the information in the book to manifest whatever she wanted to um, and it, it culminated in um, it culminated in her being led to Highclere Castle, which is where Downton Abbey was filmed. And underneath the house, there was a vault um, full of Egyptian artefacts. And amongst all these Egyptian artefacts, she found the sacred emerald stone that she was looking for, because emerald is a stone of abundance. And she finds this stone, and the stone is the key to her being able to manifest what she wants with, with the information from the book. Um, it's yeah, it's quite a quite a long-winded story, and there were a number of pieces in this collection to explain each each. So this is um, the Castle Terrace Bar, twelve by sixteen oil. Now the next and last in the Evangelina series. I said I didn't paint people, didn't I? But here she is. Um, is this one, and it's called A Quiet Night In. So she's found her book. She's got them ready. She's got the gorgeous fire lit and ready. It goes around the corner of the canvas. That was tricky to paint. She's poured herself a glass of wine and she's going to now sit down and read the book and understand how she's going to make it work. So this is a quiet night in, uh, 12 by 24 oil on canvas, chunky. Comes ready to hang so you don't need a frame. Then... Within the same Evangelina collection, I painted a number of um, what I call tile sculptures. So this is one of them, and the detail in them is, is amazing. They're like little dolls on, um, on a reclaimed tile. Little feet, <laughs> tiny little shoes. And the drapes and folds within the fabric. So this is um, it's a, a tile, you can see roughly the size of it. And um, I think this one's called Make an Entrance, but she's in the sale if you follow the link. So that's, that's that one. Then, after we've made an entrance, I've got Exit in Style. She's got a lovely feather in her hat. Beautiful cloche hat from the 1930s. And then the detail in the shoes with the gold edging. It, it really is, it really is a stunning tiny statement piece um, for a bathroom or a kitchen or anywhere where you've got a tiny space and you just want to create something that um, just pops out at you. And it's quite unusual. And this little glass um, is filled with a special paint that when you turn the light off, it glows. <laughs> I have a thing for glowing things, yeah. When I was a child, I used to have these um, these little jelly animals that glowed in the dark. My favorite, one of my favorite toys. Another little tiny one here. Beautiful cloche hat detail with a peacock feather, vintage clock, and again, little cocktail, which glows in the dark. A slight detour, just focusing on, on her shoes, really because I just wanted to make a pair of really tiny shoes and to see how thin um, I could get that, um, that's the stiletto heels without breaking. Beautiful piece. So that's that one. <coughs> And then this one here, 
with amazing detail on the shoes. See how th sort of thin and narrow the stilettos are. And if you like Le Bouton shoes, then this is a piece for you. Or if you know somebody that does, it'll make a lovely gift. And then the last one in this series, again, very delicate, doll-like faces. The beautiful dress and detail and the little red shoes. Gorgeous pieces. There were three in that set, but the third one sold to a lady in, um, in the States, uh, which is quite a way for my sculptures to go. So, so that's Evangelina. Um, now there's three pieces to show you here that are, they're called Penmon Glow, or Pe Penmon, as perhaps how you say it, is um, in Wales. I think it's, I think it's in Anglesey, maybe. Um, and in, in Wales, you, it's, it's a really good place to actually see um, aurora, but also the bioluminescent wave where you get these algae um, and they produce, they produce the, um, the luminescent chemical that when disturbed, they give the, chem the chemical, comes alive, it makes a light. And it's what creates these waves. So these paintings are mixed media. There's, that's actual, um, like feels rough like sand. And then the sea is painted over the top and it's glossy because it's coated in a resin to make it look wet. And when you turn the lights out, the, the waves actually glow in this series of paintings. So there's three of them. Um, and I think they would look really good um, to get together as a, as a triptych, you know, three, three that way. So there's this one here. Again, they all glow. You can probably see, if I hold it close, where it's blue. The blue is where the glow starts to come. And then that's the final piece there. So these are Penman Glow. And I definitely recommend them in set, um, especially on a, um, you know, maybe a, a light coloured wall or even like a really dark blue wall where it would look really nice. Uh, and then, moving into a slightly different um, media, so on the, using the tile sculptures, I've actually produced a few more of these. This one's called Autumn, and it's a bit steampunky, there's some cob details there, there's the beautiful autumn oak leaves. My favourite tree is the oak, and when it gives off its gorgeous autumn colours, it just makes you go wow when you see an autumn tree. Um, and the gold, the gold paint in this really, really picks up with the resin coat. It's a, it's a, it's a beautiful, beautiful piece. So autumn's available there. And then another tile sculpture. This one is called Obsidian because it's got a real piece of um, obsidian there. And it's got your gothic, gothic -y chains, some steampunky cog detail. You know, it's it's a yeah. Well, you can see by my attire, it's very much a gothic, um, steampunky, witchy kind of piece. Very nice that one. Then just moving things around because I haven't got any space. There's these two pieces. These are called um, rust. So they go, they go together. This one, again, very um, steampunky with a beautiful goddess-like detail and cog detail. And I've painted it to look metallic, but with metal rusts, so you get that lovely orange color. And then also little flashes of blue on this one. And then, some more on this one here as well to look like the oxidization of copper now this one it's it's really hard to show you if i just angle it if you look here you can see it almost has like an iridescent effect there and it's it just catches your eye every so often it's purely an accident i didn't intend for that i didn't try to make that it just it just happened, but it really gives this piece um, a beautiful feeling because 
it's like it's it, it's like it's made of metal and oil and it just really lovely. So um, yes, those two pieces are called Rust. And then the last in the tower sculptures is this one, and it's called Fool's Gold because it's got a real piece of iron pie right here, which is what Fool's Gold is. If I angle it with the window, you can see, hopefully you can see it's actually glinting because it's, it's a real pyrite stone. And then beautiful goddess detail, a wonderful metallic detail effects on there. So she's, um, she's called Fool's Gold. <laughs> Then, the last thing, I've worked on these just literally this last couple of days. Um, I bought some mounts and I'm, I've put together some of my original watercolours in these lovely mount boards. So it, it would arrive ready to pop into a frame. So all, this is um, roughly A4, but this is A3 size. So all you'd need to do um, is is bring is buy a, um, an A3 frame and, and pop this straight in. So that's a lovely Easter hair. Oh. Then all of these, um, if you see any that you like here, just message me with which one, and I'm doing them all for thirty pounds plus postage. Just a special deal just on this link. Normally they'd be fifty. Um, so they come with a, a hard back board, called, it's called a grey board, it's just recycled card to give it a bit of structure and then mounted and then cellophane wrapped. And this one here, oh, I, can't, I can't remember, what, what's the purple mushroom? It's got a special name, Amma, Amma something. Oh, help me out. If anyone knows, please do mess with me because it's going to bug me. I'll have to Google it. But it's, they've, got, they've got a special name. But look how purple they are. And the beautiful subtle detail of the leaves, it's almost like a bit of batik in there as well. So that's a, a gorgeous print. And the last in the print series are, in no particular order, lovely barn owl with snowdrops. This one is, um, I thought I like to think that it's like March. To me, I, I made this up, but to me, it's like March, where you've got no leaves on the trees, but you've got the sun picking up and highlighting all the ivy on the trees. And I love this deep ravine that goes down here. And I imagine that about here, there's probably a little, um, a little stream, sort of babbling brook, trickling away deep within the wood. This one, beautiful classic autumn oak. This one here, it's a wonderful English landscape. I made it up, it doesn't, it doesn't exist anywhere. Well, maybe it does. <laughs> if it does, that'd be a bit spooky, wouldn't it? I painted something and it looks like somewhere that actually exists. And then we've got owl and poppies. With a lovely glow of light in this one. These are all watercolours um, on Bamboo, actually, they're on bamboo watercolour paper. Amazing discovery, because I'm trying to reduce my environmental footprint on everything. I try to use recycled where I can. I recycle as much as I can. Um, and I found, when I found this paper made from bamboo, which is like totally sustainable, I and mean, you've seen how fast bamboo grows, and now they make watercolour paper. Um, and it's lovely, it's beautiful, soft, and really thick as well, holds the paint gorgeous. So, um, so those are the prints there. And last but not least, um, because so many of you have um, seen the Aurora recently and, and been asking lots of questions about this particular painting, this is called Euphoria, um, which I have to say is the feeling I get when, when someone buys one of my paintings and makes me jump around. This is um, created in oil on canvas on a thick canvas um, stretched over a wooden frame um, and I I painted it after six in the UK in Coventry in May. Um, we, we were camping at a pagan festival and my husband looked up and it must have been about half eleven and said um, 
is that, is that the, the aurora in the sky? I, I looked up and, um, and it was, it was the aurora and this is what people were seeing. So if you'd like this one, it's not in the sale, um, but I'm happy to do a special offer for anyone that sees it through this post. So drop me a message um, and get in touch. Okay, so that's the end of the studio sale. Um, follow the link, go and have a browse. I'm going to leave the sale up for three days because not everybody um, that will see this live, they won't see it today necessarily, they might watch it back in a couple of days. So I'm gonna leave it open for three days and then I'll, then I'll shut it down. So if there's a piece that you like, um, get in quick, because you don't wanna miss it. So thanks very much for coming to the studio sale and I hope you have a lovely evening. Bye for now.